So hello everyone, good afternoon. It's a pleasure for, for us to have all of you here. Uh, this is actually our webinar with Andres Moura. Andres Moura is the Regional Studies Leader at Ecopetrol Brazil. He holds a PhD in Geology from the University of Potsdam in Germany and has over 20 years of experience in the oil industry mostly as a structural and exploration geologist, including the Andes of Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, and offshore Brazil. Between 2009 and 2012, he, has the he was the leader of the largest research project stood in the Andes, uh, Cronologia de Deformación en las Cuencas Subandinas. And between 2015 and 2018, he was the technical head of onshore exploration at Ecopetrol. He has published more than 100 scientific publications in interna international journals and books and has edited a number of special issues and books for the APG and for the Geological Society of London. So enjoy our presentation and Mr. Andres, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Douglas, for, for the invitation. I'm very happy to, very pleased to be here. So I, I wonder if, can you see my screen? Uh, well or, or okay or is, is there any any problem so I'm, I'm projecting the first slide is that fine yes it is fine okay so let me start uh, uh, with the introduction of the the title of the talk is the the use of sequential kinematic restorations to predict pore pressure regimes and panel temperatures in different tectonic settings and this is the team uh, that work in this in this um, presentation in these results which includes people from uh, different South American countries and from Late Andes, who is the company who developed the software Andino 3D, Andino 3D, and, and myself from Ecopetrol. So we have Francisco Sanchez is from Venezuela, Ernesto Cristalini, Juan Hernandez, Joaquin Negro, and Daniel Balciunas from Argentina, myself from Colombia, and Vinicius Riquetti from Brazil. So, and, and then we work together uh, to, to show you these results uh, that we're going to show you today. This is the outline of the, of the talk. Um, so the first, the, the list of topics that I'm going to, to, to uh, uh, talk is, the first one is the importance. Uh, why it's important to assess pressure and temperature before a uh, petroleum systems modeling and uh, even while we construct a sequential kinematic restoration before doing the actual the petroleum systems modeling. The second point is related with some fundamentals that we use in this work for of pore pressure assessment at geological time scales. And the third uh, is related with the application of uh, pore pressure assessment in hydrocarbon exploration. And then I'm going to show case studies of what, what we did with the team I mentioned before. So uh, the case studies are from the Eastern foothills of Colombia and uh, from the campus basin in Brazil. <clears throat> and in the end, I'm going to show uh, some conclusions. Uh, so to start with the first topic uh, related with the importance of assessing pressure and temperature before petroleum systems modeling and while we construct a sequential kinematic restoration, uh, this picture is from Slomberge and it shows a 3D petroleum system model that a uh, type of model could be also 2D uh, and it requires as an important input structure and kinematics, which are basic input to uh, create petroleum systems models, especially in zones of complex structures like compressional or salt tectonics. Uh, and uh, as you all know, a uh, petroleum systems modeling is a primary tool for evaluating uh, petroleum prospects. Uh, but uh, building one of such models may take weeks or even months uh, to create the models. Uh, so it's a time consuming task. And then it's difficult to change the kinematics that we introduced, the, the structural evolution, the change in shape and geometry of the, of the structures uh, after they are in the model. So it would be nice to be able to change not only the, the, the geometry, but have a more refined pressure and temperature constraints before they are, intro they are introduced uh, in the petroleum systems software. So then the question is, can we assess pressure and temperature while we construct a sequential kinematic restoration uh, like this one <clears throat> from the Colombian Eastern Foothills? And the answer that we have is that in this work, we used uh, new tools developed by uh, uh, the developers from Late Andes in, uh, inside Andino uh, 3D, Andino 3D, 
for uh, the assessment of pilot temperatures and the, the evolution of port pressures uh, while we construct uh, the kinematic restorations. Uh, second, I'm going to speak about the fundamentals of port pressure assessment at uh, geological time scales. So this is, this is um, a figure from the book of Hanschel and Kaurauf uh, from 2008. And it shows the following. The dashed line is the hydrostatic pressure, which is basically equal to the weight of the overlying water column. Uh, the solid line uh, in this part of the screen in the, in the left-hand side, in the right-hand side is the lithostatic pressure, which is equal to the overburden weight related with densities and, and porosities. Uh, and we know that pressure in a system in, a, in the subsurface remain hydrostatic when the fluids uh, within the system uh, are allowed to flow and then when compaction occurs. So then we don't have our pressure. But when the fluid outflow is uh, impeded or is, is delayed, uh, so then our pressure uh, increases. And then uh, we have this second trend that is uh, the case when, when we have um, the tendency of pressures to go closer to the, to the uh, lithostatic uh, pressure and even uh, 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 more importantly, if they go close to the fracture pressure, the fracture gradient. And the difference between both is called uh, the effective stress. Uh, so in general, the main factor causing um, uh, our pressure would be the presence of good seal lithologies. Uh, and as I wrote below, they delay fluid outflow and facilitate over pressure development. But at geological time scales in the book by Hanschel and Kaurauf in uh, 2008, uh, we can see other variables that control variations of our pressure over geological time scales. Uh, I already mentioned that over pressure is directly dependent on burial compactional lithology, but rates of the processes, rates of burial and exhumation are additional important factors controlling uh, over pressure uh, at geological time scales. We have here again depth and pressure in megapascals. And in the first, the number one is the, is the hydrostatic gradient curve. Uh, and if, if we increase the, the, the um, sedimentation rates from 100 to even 1,000 uh, um, meters per million year or millimeters per year, we would see an increase in over pressure uh, that is higher uh, the deeper we are. And the opposite also happens if we if we do have um, a decrease in our pressure because of, 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 of erosion, erosional denudation or exhumation, we would have under pressure under pressure rocks. And these are uh, important principles that we used uh, for this modeling. Uh, what is the application of pore pressure assessment in hydrocarbon exploration? Uh, this this figure shows statistics uh, from Slomberger that show that. Uh, 45% of industry dry holes uh, can be related with seal failure. Uh, from that, uh, top seal is 14% and lateral seal is 31%. So we need to predict uh, over pressures in, uh, in pressures in general in, in areas where over pressure controls the seal capacity. Uh, so for example, we have again, uh, this, this similar figure as I was showing before, we have uh, the hydrostatic pressure, the weight of the, of the water column, and then we have another variable that is the so-called fracture gradient. So it's the moment, the amount of pressure that, that the rock resists till it reaches the fracture, the hydraulic fracturing. And that is that can be measured when, when we drill uh, wells uh, by means of, of leak-off tests. And then by using the, 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 a compilation of leak-off tests in an area and a region, uh, that compilation, uh, uh, we may end up with a, with a trend like this, which is the fracture gradient trend of a, of an, of a given region. If we have some uh, pressure measurements from, from a well, and we see that the trend uh, at depth uh, within that well is approaching the fracture gradient, we can predict that we may have uh, seal problems uh, at those levels because of the possibility of, of having hydraulic fractures. And the difference between how close the, the, the actual pressure measurement is to the, to the fracture gradient to, or, or to even to the burden pressure is the so-called effective stress. Um, in in uh, wellbore geomechanics, it's also an important uh, aspect where, where we apply uh, pressure measurements. 
Uh, for example, we have here again the same variables, uh, lithostatic pressure, fracture pressure in our units, pounds per gallon, where 8.3 is about hydrostatic, and our pressure starts about 10 uh, pounds per gallon. And what we have here is the curve of uh, along a borehole, the curve of predicted, for example, it, it would be important to predict the pore pressure to design the, the, the proper mod weight, which would be uh, uh, controlling uh, the, that amount of pressure along the well, and it will uh, guarantee the wellbore stability. So for example, we have uh, uh, moments when the, when the pore pressure in, in, in this blue uh, dashed line is higher than, than the mod weights uh, um, that we have here in this solid black line, then there might be uh, cavings at the level. So the, there's a need to predict pore pressure when, when we drill wells and uh, to design a proper uh, mod weight. Uh, so let's start with the case studies from the Eastern Colomand foothills. And uh, um, so uh, we have a case study from, from uh, the Colombian uh, foothills. And to give some context, we have uh, the Colombian foothills are analog uh, of, there are analogs in other areas. Uh, for example, in the Madre de Dios Basin, uh, we have a similar configuration in Peru, uh, uh, south of the Camiseo uh, gas field, giant gas field. So we have a basement involved area. Uh, which creates the relief uh, in, in and uplifts the basement, uplifts the basement, and that's the same case in Colombia. And a marginal frontal uh, syncline where we have the thin skin, narrow thin skin deformation, that happens in in, in both areas. I will see cross sections of, of uh, those areas. Uh, so we have these cross sections I've done in the past uh, uh, with uh, the team here uh, from from Madre de Dios. Uh, and what we see is stack uh, thrust sheets on top of each other below uh, this uh, marginal syncline. That presumably is related with, with uh, uh, the presence of a high frictional uh, basal decolement uh, or detachment. And uh, that can be also observed in Colombia with this cross section that is very uh, famous from Jaime Martinez, 2006. What we see is uh, the marginal thin skin uh, syncline, where the foreland sequences are uh, uplifted kilometers, maybe four kilometers above the uh, uh, the regional le level, and then we have uh, here uh, thrust sheets uh, that are composed of, of faulted detachment folds, and this is the main case study case study that we will uh, analyze uh, during this talk. So important. Um, data or considerations about the kinematics include uh, the following. So we have an area that is conditioned by tectonic inheritance, uh, normal faults affecting uh, the, the, even the, the proximal foreland of, of Colombia, and then burial during, during the, the um, foreland, uh, the onset of the, of the foreland evolution. And at some point with enough burial, if we have enough burial and, and compression, we would have contractional structures, which would be detachment faults controlled, rooted in, in, in the ancient normal faults. If we, don't, we, if we don't have enough burial, in other cases, we would have a thick skin tectonics, so harpoon-shaped structures. At the end, by the ply Pleistocene, those detachment faults are faulted and stacked on top of each other, developing um, a triangular zone. That is the basic geometry that we have and the basic evolution that we have. Again, with the cross-section from Martinez, uh, what we see is uh, important data from uh, fission tracks. So what we see here is that the uppermost thrust sheets from Martinez cross section, we have uh, two important heating events. Uh, this is million, millions of years. So palogene heating, uh, late oligocene, early Miocene cooling, and then reheating and a final aggressive uh, cooling uh, that is controlled by the, by the structures. We associate uh, the, the first cooling event uh, by the early uh, late Oligocene, early Miocene, with the uh, formation of the fault of the initial detachment uh, detachment folds. Another important figure from from uh, Jaime Martinez as well is this uh, summarizing the the kinematic uh, progression of, of the formation, which is four and words. We have uh, uh, one, two, three, four thrust sheets, and the older one as we observe today, is the number uh, one to the west. And then there is a progression of the formation to the east till we have stacked uh, uh, um, 
triangle zone with different thrust sheets. And importantly, with also with fission tracks, we detected that uh, this uh, this um, uh, stacking of the of the thrust sheets is very young. It happened within the last three million years. So that's an important constraint on the rates of the formation that we have for to model the pore pressures. And then this these are actual the actual pressure data from from the foothills. What we see is the following: different trends. The foreland aquifer. Uh, with this uh, water trend here, and then an intermediate aquifer with this with this green trend, and the red, uh, uh, the most uh, westernmost uh, aquifer regime that is the red one. Uh, if we use this equation, that is very simple, in, in multiplying um, the acceleration of gravity, the density of the water, and the depth, we can find whether these uh, uh, pressure measurements are in hydrostatic state. And we, what we find is that this blue trend is uh, perfectly hydrostatic. All the, all the predicted with this equation, all the measurements from NDTs and DSTs uh, would suggest that that's, um, this is uh, hydrostatic uh, gradients, uh, not the, the, that we don't have overpressure at that level. So, but if we prolong and project this trend to shallower levels, we see that it's systematically shifted and lower than the red trend uh, in about thousand psi this means uh, to us also using this equation we can test that uh, that the red uh, trend uh, here is uh, over pressure about thousand psi that is not is not a high over pressure none of none of those uh, sheets uh, have a high over pressure so we have to expect if we are to model this this system that uh, the pressures are close to hydrostatic and also higher over pressure in the in the westernmost thrust sheets those higher over pressures, we could explain, we could, we could suggest that they are related with, with uh, thrust sheets that coming from deeper uh, burial depths and that, that are exhumed. So we can have over thrusting of the deeper uh, sheets on top of the, of the shallower ones. So if, if we see the first case study testing uh, this behavior in the, in the Eastern Colombian foothills, we have this cross section from the Eastern foothills with the progression of events that we have seen before, for example, we, we see here uh, the detachment folds. <clears throat> They're faulted at some point in a sequence that progresses uh, towards the foreland. And then uh, we can see the first results from, from uh, Andino. At 23 million years, uh, by the end of the Oligocene, we have more or less horizontal overpressured. So this is uh, in megapascals and then let's say 20 megapascals is about uh, 2,900 uh, PSI. So the, the sequence is significantly over pressure following this model by 23 MA, but the pressure trends are more or less horizontal. A high lower pressure is predicted by uh, at greater depths. But if we uh, proceed with the deformation, what we observe is that there were pressure domain, there were pressure thrust sheets uh, stay over pressured and overthrust the more frontal sheets. So uh, what we see is that there is not, no time to uh, re-equilibrate the system and the pressure uh, um, domains are transported on top of the other. So we can see this uh, um, orange uh, or colors on top of less overpressure domains. And there is a significant uplift uh, um, of the, of the overpressure uh, trends or the overpressure colors which is suggesting that uh, we, we can say that it's more or less in agreement uh, with what I suggested, what, what I was suggesting earlier, the fact that the deeper uh, thrust sheets from the western side of the, of the triangle zone, uh, they, are, uh, they have higher pressures than the frontal ones, and they are overthrusted, uh, overpressured as well. However, the overpressure in megapascal is much higher, it is, is well above the, 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 the hydrostatic gradient. So this means that we haven't managed to, to, to calibrate uh, with the actual observations. We can uh, see a second case study where we try to, to, to uh, go to be better, to be closer to the, to, the, to, the, to the calibration. And we are trying to test the effect of changing uh, properties and kinematics. In the, in the first uh, try, we test uh, the effect of slow kinematics uh, using a backwards breaking sequence of deformation and low rates of deformation. I'm referring to rates of deformation in the, in the frontal triangle zone. There is a, I will show you there is a, 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 
a big thrust uh, to the west, but these are the rates of deformation of the frontal, frontal triangle zone that are, I would say, low, 0 0.35 millimeter, millimeters per year in the frontal stacks. And we proceed with the, with the sequence of, of deformation, which is this one. So we have the constraints, the basic constraints on the kinematics, early developments by the oligocene of detachment folds, uh, they're faulted in a progression that starts with the with the oldest uh, would be the most frontal thrust sheets, and then we continue with the next one, and the next one would be the the, the, the youngest uh, to be deformed would be the the uh, western uh, thrust sheet from this triangle zone. So that's why we call that a backwards breaking sequence, and the rates of shortening are low. Let's see what happens uh, if we check in more detail the evolution. Of the, of the pore pressure. And uh, uh, let's see what happens when we impose another constraint, which is which is a shale dominant lithology. What is the effect of the shaley uh, lithology? What we see is in the beginning, during the rifting time at that place, we already have our pressure uh, at, at greater depths, but under pressured uh, or close to hydrostatic uh, in shallower levels. If we start deforming, we will see the progression of the formation uh, the early detachment folding, and then the detachment folds are faulted. And we can see here a significant uh, moment when we see that the overpressure domain to the west of the most important thrust sheet starts thrusting on top of the, of the frontal domains. And the more we progress, the, the more significant that this happens. And this happens also in the frontal thrust sheets. What we see is that the overpressure domains a, they are uplifted above the region, like like it happens with the with the with the with the rocks itself. So the, the system has no time to equilibrate, and then we have a dramatic uh, final part where we have the the um, regional pre-deformation level with our pressure uh, domains here uh, in in undeformed state, but they were uplifted uh, by the by the uh, deformation inside the triangle zone. Uh, and then we have uh, the present day state. state. Uh, that is, uh, what, what is important is that reinforces the observation that I made uh, in the beginning regarding the fact that um, the overpressure domains are thrusting uh, the less overpressure frontal domains. However, we get with a shaley uh, lithology, a very overpressured uh, triangle zone that is not yet in agreement with the actual data we see and I was explaining in the beginning of, of this talk that um, the, the, the most of the of the of the of the aquifer uh, pressure regimes are uh, hydrostatic, with some uh, uh, degree of of, of over pressure that is thousand psi, but it's not related with the, with the megapascals here. Thousand psi would be less than ten uh, megapascals, so so we don't observe that here. So we don't have that section calibrated yet. So then. In the, in the second uh, case of the same cross-section and the sl slow kinematics, but using sandy lithologies, we try to see if by using um, uh, uh, more sandy lithologies uh, that would be translated in, in initial porosities and, and porosity decays in the software, uh, using more those features for sandstones, uh, if we get uh, closer to the actual data. And the initial state, we see at 31 uh, million years, the degree of overpressure is much less. Uh, you see the colors are the tendency to have green colors, so we have much less overpressure, uh, which shows that the, the actual effect of, of, of the sandy lithologies, because sandstone, as, as I was mentioning in the beginning of this talk, they would allow um, the fluid to escape from, from the system, and then they will allow to those overpressure thrushes to recalibrate. We get some uh, interesting observation here, white, colors, so non overpressure uh, thrust sheets. And then our, pre our pressure increases at depth till we get the maximum overpressure by the end of the deformation phase. But then um, we still see, so the, the, the overpressure is much less than, let's say, about 10 PSI, which is close to, to what we get uh, in, in, in the actual observations. Uh, but um, mm, also, some uh, degree of, of overthrusting of the of, or pressure domains, especially the most internal, the western one, on top of the less overpressured uh, um, uh, areas in domains in the triangle zone. If you use faster kinematics and a forward breaking sequence, which is the, the closest that we can get 
to the to the actual uh, to the actual um, uh, 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 kinematic behavior uh, evolution that we know from that area, and high rates of deformation, as I was showing earlier, fast exhumation or erosional denudation at the end. We would use uh, in that case 2.4 millimeters per year in the frontal stacks in the in the triangle zone, and then that would be the the kinematics. So, um, and again, if we go backwards, we see. Again, the development of the detachment folds. Uh, the detachment folds are faulted, uh, but uh, the first uh, um, thrust sheet to develop is the internal one, and then the formation progresses uh, in a foreland uh, direction till we uh, reach the present day. So, and rates that are much higher. Uh, most of the of the uh, you see that the, the the three frontal thrust sheets are removed, totally removed. Uh, already by 3 million years, they, they do not exist, or they, they were originated within the last 3 million years, which is imposing uh, significantly, significantly higher uh, rates of deformation to, to the system. Um, if you go to the simulation, what we see is again, with a shaley, in a shaley case, uh, as expected, we see uh, much more uh, overpressure because the shales uh, do not allow the cir circulation of fluids in the system, and then we have uh, uh, the thrusting at higher deformation rates of deformation, and we see, for example, at one million years is much more significant. How the overpressure domains at higher rates? Uh, simply, I would say uh, there is no time for the the, the, the pressures to equilibrate uh, between the, the, the different compartments, and we have a very dramatic uh, um, picture where we see all the overpressure domains, high overpressure domains on the order of tens of thousands of PSIs, which is this, this, this values here, over thrusting the frontal thrust sheets. The issue with that is that this is very far from, from the, the actual, we don't have that much over pressure in the actual data that we see, have seen, we have seen in at the reservoir level, which is this one. But something interesting that happens is that if we go to zero a million years, that pattern, the maximum over pressure in the Shaley case is at one million years. But at zero, uh, we have a reduction. So you see that the, that the colors uh, are going down. And it is, I can anticipate that is related with the, with the big uh, movement of this, of this frontal uh, uh, thrust sheet. Let's test a case uh, with Andino uh, where we have uh, fast, uh, faster uh, deformation rates uh, again, but a sandy case. Again, the sandstones favor uh, the fluids to circulate between the different fault compartments. So the amount of overpressure pressure in megapascals in the scale here is much lower. <clears throat> and uh, we start seeing increasing uh, uh, overpressure with, with increasing depths and increasing deformation. Uh, and we have the maximum overpressure pressure by 3 million years, which is not as high as the <clears throat> overpressure pressure that we had when we had the, the, uh, the Shaley case. But there is something, something significant. Uh, again, these faults and, and these uh, frontal stacks uh, are active. They, are, they, are, they have no displacement at 3 million years, but when, whenever they have displacement uh, and also the, the, the more internal faults, we see a dramatic reduction, the opposite from the other case, a dramatic reduction in overpressure, uh, which is an interesting uh, fact observation that we haven't seen in the more shaley case. Um, so uh, then uh, what we see uh, is uh, that uh, even at zero million years, we could have the, the most uh, frontal, no, the most internal thrust sheet could be, could be a, a, in hydrostatic state or even under pressure. And the frontal ones, they have some areas with, with uh, hydrostatic uh, pressures and, and, and a slightly high uh, over pressure, which is in line with the, with the actual observations. If we go, if we go to the, if we, if we go later, I will show the actual pressure data we would have uh, that pattern of, of very, very, um, very low overpressure or hydrostatic state, which means to me that uh, rates uh, matter for 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 uh, predicting uh, overpressure in in these thrust uh, uh, environments. If we see a summary, we see that the fast Shaley case shows the more dramatic uh, case of over thrusting of the overpressure domains on top of the less pressure domains, pressure domains in, in, in this direction. Uh, but the opposite happens in the, with the fast kinematics if you use sandy lithologies. Uh, we have here 
a, a, a reduction in, from the maximum overpressure that we get at three million years. When, when, the, when the frontal thrusts are active, they are only, we have only here faulted the detachment faults without faults. When they're faulted, we see a reduction in, in overpressure. And also when the, when the most internal fault is, is activated, um, we see also uh, a, a reduction in the, in the, in the uh, overpressure. Uh, the Shelley lithology reproduces the same patterns, but we aren't able to calibrate uh, in none of the cases when we have uh, Shelley lithologies. Uh, and the best calibration we get uh, with the actual data with the fast kinematics and the sandy lithologies. That is, that is uh, suggesting us that uh, um, the, the, the fast kinematics are, are very important for the, for the um, um, calibrating the, with the actual data. We can see here, uh, so we have reproduced the two patterns with the, testing the kinematics while we construct the, 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 um, the kinematic restoration in, in Andino. Uh, and we reproduced uh, with the fast kinematics and the sandy case, uh, our pressures, uh, very low over pressures, close to, to hydrostatic, and then uh, some degree of over pressure uh, higher than in the frontal thrust sheets in the internal ones, because of the fact that they're brought uh, from deeper levels and they're, they were more over pressured in the past and they are uplifted and over thrusting uh, these sequences, the, the uppermost thrust sheets. That is a, an important finding because we see that if we were if we are able to do that before petroleum systems rolling, testing different kinematics, we would provide a more refined and more more uh, um, precise kinematics to be later modeled and to predict petroleum accumulations. Let's analyze uh, the reason for the uh, I was I was uh, um, mentioning the reduction in in, in pressure uh, uh, in the, within the last three million years for the sandy case that is not uh, the fast kinematics and sandy case, which is not very significant. It's, it can be observed, but it's not as significant as in the fast kinematics sandy case. And what we see here is uh, Andino, Andino 3, uh, as I was uh, mentioning, also produces temperatures and, and time temperature plots and, and depth um, uh, time depth plots. And we see uh, the, the plots for the, for the fast kinematics, what we observe. Is the following. Uh, so the the most uh, internal thrust sheets they have a history that um, we see um, very rapid overburden within this is million years millions of years and depth and we see a, about two kilometers of rapid overburden as we have predicted for the frontal for for the most internal thrust sheets from the from the um, from the triangle zone. We have a uh, very rapid uh, overburden and then rapid exhumation, which is, uh, if we see the numbers, it is, it is impressive and it's in agreement with the, with the fission track data that we have been showing, is about uh, uh, 2.5 kilometers. This, this is from 2.3 kilometers of burial to 5.8 and about 100 degrees Celsius for this, for this um, thrust sheet. For uh, the most frontal thrust sheets, uh, uh, we see that the, the uh, degree of uh, final exhumation is being reduced, but it's still significant. We have still here in this one, we have two kilometers of exhumation by the end of the deformation. And then as, we, as, as I was showing in the, in the, in the very beginning uh, uh, for the, for the um, um, appetite efficient track data, the, the pattern for the, for the frontal thrust sheet is that it stays close to the maximum temperature for about 10 million years. So that is, um, I would say, a successful calibration regarding pressures and also kinematics and temperatures uh, for, this, for this. But it's very significant, this uh, uh, two kilometers of exhumation at the end. If we compare with the low kinematics, we see uh, fast overburden within the last uh, 50 million years. But if, but if we check the exhumation, it's only uh, on the order of about one kilometer. And I think that's the big difference. So it is, uh, the, the, if we go back to the, to the, the uh, mm, previous slides, in the fast kinematics, we have a much more aggressive final exhumation on the order of three kilometers. That suggests that this pattern of, of under pressures, of, of pressures coming back from 
um, maximum over, pre over pressure to hydrostatic would be related with, with fast deformation rates and fast denudation rates that prompt pressure release, release due to erosion and loading. So that is what we can see here that uh, at one million years, uh, uh, the, the level of, the, of this projected eroded levels are located here. And we can see they are, have been uplifted uh, massively uh, because of massive shortening within the, the, one, the, the last uh, million year. Uh, and that is what presumably I would suggest, uh, or we would suggest causes the pressure reduction. So in summary, what we see in this case is uh, 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 competing two variables in their fast kinematics. Uh, the rapid overpressure that is being rapidly over thrusted on top of the frontal thrust sheets. And when that happens and we have a shaley lithology, we would see that uh, there is no time for the, for the system to equilibrate and to, and to be uh, to, to, to have uh, um, the effects of erosional unloading in, in overpressure. So we preserve the uplifted overpressure domains. Uh, we see some reduction from here to there. But in the other case, if you have sandier lithologies and more fluid circulation in the system, then we would see that the erosional unloading is more important than the initial overpressure uh, from the models. And we understand that when we see these uh, um, time temperature plots. So in the end, uh, I would like to stress the role that I was stressing in the beginning of rates uh, uh, to see to see the process of pressure in terms of rates that the key message that uh, um, sometimes is not considered with geological time scales and, and rates. So we see again that depending on the lithology uh, and the rates of overburden, we see an increase uh, from the hydrostatic trend towards the 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 uh, uh, lithostatic or the fracture uh, pressure uh, trend. But the higher the rates of deposition, uh, the greater uh, the increase in, in, in overpressure. And the opposite also happens. It's not, it's not shown in this, in this um, uh, graphic, but if we, if we have uh, erosional unloading and also a, a due, due pressure release, related pressure release, this would be expressed by pressures that would be lower than uh, the hydrostatic, and that's what we have uh, documented in the in the in the uh, in the numerical models that I've shown. Then the second case study is from the sun, uh, from the Campos Basin in Brazil. In the Campos Basin, the purpose that we have is uh, to use effective stress to 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 assess uh, seal capacity in those areas where we have um, uh, where we have uh, no data regarding uh, seals. So uh, if we see here again the hydrostatic uh, pressure, we need to predict using the same code from Andino, the uh, uh, predict the amount of our pressure. So how close is the pressure gradient to the fracture gradient and how our pressure are, are the distal sectors of the campus basin so that we can predict if a, 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 um, our pressure would be a, a problem for, for seals. Uh, this is the area and we use seismic lines, regional seismic lines. And important is that we will calibrate that uh, uh, the prediction with pseudo wells uh, because the actual log data, no, the actual velocity data uh, from PSDMs in that case, it uh, would allow us to 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 do one D geomechanical models that we will be able to calibrate as, as pseudo wells with the with the <clears throat> with the with the uh, prediction that we do from the from the seismic lines. Uh, this is the, the, the general geology of the, of the campus basin. Uh, just a minute. And we see that uh, the, the key place that are very hot today in, in the world, I would say, uh, the Prisal play, uh, which has a, a reef play, uh, which has a, a very perfect seal that, that is the salt. And uh, we're not related with that in this talk because it is it is a, a very a very uh, good seal, but uh, and the sort of result typical result accumulations in this cartoon, but we see here we can detect uh, the post salt sequences that were this was uh, uh, for a long time the the, the biggest uh, oil producer uh, uh, play in Brazil. Uh, till till the onset of the of the results and and it hosts we we calculate that it hosts important reserves still today. But the issue is that the salt is not there to seal. So we need to predict uh, what's what's going to happen with the seal uh, uh, if we will have seals and and if if the, we will have our pressure. Uh, um, so um, 
Uh, and, the, and then uh, uh, the important point is that the external portions of this basin are frontier areas, as we can see in this cross section. Uh, so what we see is that these areas have been explored. We have wells up to this sector, but then we have prospects. So this is the salt, the salt uh, uh, layers. And then this would be the, the frontal uh, thrust, uh, the salt thrusting at the, the formation front here. And this, this will be the boundary between the oceanic and continental crust. And then what we see is that uh, we have wells up to this point, but we may have prospects in this area in the pre-salt and in the post-salt. Uh, and we need to predict what, what's going to happen with the, with the pressures in that area. Will we have over pressures or not? That's an important question. The key observation is that the calibration wells that we have here, all of them uh, show hydrostatic pressures. Um, and then we uh, produce a kinematic uh, restoration as in the previous cases. Uh, and so this would be the, the evolution with the, with the salt being the biggest challenge in these restorations. And then we see the results. Uh, so we see sandier uh, lithologies in the distal portions of the, of the uh, campus uh, basin. We would see that the degree of overpressure is very low and it reasonably calibrates with the, with the wells that we have up to this area. Uh, and as, as we expected, we see a very high, maybe extremely high overpressure uh, uh, in, in the, in the pre-salt uh, levels. But then we would predict that the deeper place here would have some overpressure. But this would be more dramatic if you use shaley, uh, shaley uh, lithologies uh, for the distal parts, which is a prediction because we have no wells in the sectors. If we use the shaley lithologies, um, we would have much higher overpressure at all the levels in the pre-salt and in the post-salt as well. But we won't uh, be able to calibrate the wells, which ha have um, those wells have hydrostatic gradients in the in the proximal in the proximal areas. So uh, this means that uh, in this first test that we will refine with more lithologies and with more detail, we would have to 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 uh, use more sandy lithologies. In these areas, but we have to see uh, how realistic they, 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 they are. So we have to, to, to compare with the pseudo well data from here. And, uh, but the, the key message is that the key point would be to reasonable, reasonably predict the pathologies in these sectors. Um, so finally, to conclude, I have shown that um, predicting pressures and temperatures while constructing sequential kinematic restorations helps to produce more calibrated kinematics and testing scenarios before petroleum systems modeling. So this is a very important message because us as structural geologists, uh, uh, we, we, will, uh, we, we would produce uh, more calibrated um, uh, kinematic restorations before petroleum system modeling, not only regarding geometries, but also regarding pressure and temperatures, if we do that interactively with the restoration. Uh, but it is important to mention <clears throat> that these predictive scenarios must be calibrated, especially in frontier areas, using direct pressure measurements from DSTs or MDTs, if we have wells, or geomechanical predictions using well logs. And that's what we plan to do, for example, in the campus basin, using, using 1D geomechanical models based on, on velocity, uh, 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 interval velocities from PSDMs to predict uh, in that point uh, the port pressures and compare uh, them uh, with the with the observations from the from the uh, the predictions from from the kinematics, so uh, we have seen that that kinematics play a fundamental role, and in, and in foothill settings is fast in in the Colombian foothill settings where we have fast kinematics. Having fast kinematics makes a, a, a big difference um, uh, in the in the Colombian foothills. Um, the, the, the uh, uh, fast kinematics, for example, they allow the preservation of overpressure in shale dominated units. But in contrast, they do the opposite effect. They allow very rapid pressure release uh, related with erosion unloading in the case of sand dominated units. That's, that would be, oh, thank you. Thank you for your, for your attention. And, and I, I think now it's time for questions. Um... Hello, uh, thank you, Andres, uh, once more for your amazing presentation. And we have some questions here for you. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, okay. 
So the first one is from Carolina Mejia from Halliburton, uh, USA. Uh, yes. She says, a great presentation. I have a question. What's the Thank reference you. for Martinez 2015? I would like to read the entire article. Ah, that's not a, a published article. Yes, it's, it's just a, a, a cartoon that he did internally in, in our group. Yes, this is not published yet, but we expect to publish that one. Yes. Uh, the second one is from Peter Scheiner. He's a consultant in, consultant in Italy. He said, uh, in your first case study, what is the mechanism by which the overpressure was originally generated? Is it the compaction disequilibrium with the role of compression of tectonics being simply to uplift deeper units, which aren't then able to leak off the pressure associated with their deeper barrier? Or are the compression of tectonics responsible for actually generating the overpressure? Yes, I, th I think I think uh, we we have seen that it's a very interesting question. We have seen that uh, related with, with, with uh, porosity, for example. Both both are responsible for generating the overpressure. I would say, uh, for example, if we compare today, uh, we have wells in the in the Janus Foreland with porosities that could be 12, 15 percent uh, at twenty two thousand feet. But if we compare analog depths in the in the foothills, the porosity could be two to three percent, and that for me shows that is. There is no doubt that is related with tectonics. So the, the, the contraction of the formation generates uh, 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 influences the, 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 the compaction and, and the, and the uh, grain to grain uh, uh, approach uh, mechanism, uh, uh, but it's also overburdened. I, I would say it's, it's both, both things uh, influence the, in the foothill settings. Yes. Uh, okay, the next, thank you once more. Thank you. Uh, the next one is from Nicholas Perez from Tex Texas A&M from USA. Yes. Uh, in modeling pressures in Angino 3D, can you also vary the properties along the fault plane? For example, make the fault planes act as either conduits or barriers to fluid flow? Yeah, as far as I know, yes. I, I don't know if, if Ernesto Cristalini is, is, is with us, but, but as far as I remember, it, it is possible. I know Ernesto... Uh, 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 until this moment, no, until yes. this moment, no, you have only one uh, um, a value for all the fault, okay? Uh, 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 is constant for the complete fault. You cannot change along the plane of the fault. Okay, thank you, Ernesto. But, but the rock properties uh, can be changed uh, as much later. Oh, yes. Or yes, layers yes. you put, they, they can be changed. Yes, yes the, the rock proper, property, yes, but not the fault property. Uh, yes. Until this moment, uh, is only one. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one is from Luis Vergara. He is independent consultant in Germany. He says, uh, great talk, Andres, thank you. Uh, thank why you. over pressures from deep levels are not relieved during trusting? where lots of faults are involved and seals are likely, likely to get fractured, particularly in the triangle zone where the uplift is presumably in excess of four kilometers. In other so words, how do you preserve the seal integrity required for overpressure in these zones, especially where the lithologies are not so shale rich? Yes, so I, th I, th I think uh, what we detected in our modeling exercises in the past is that the, the seals are, especially in the foothills, are not perfect. What the, the secret that we have is an active kitchen. So, so uh, uh, um, what we see by modeling and, and not 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 necessarily by by uh, oil seeps and those things is that is that the oil is is being released uh, permanently uh, in 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 the foothills but the but the accumulations uh, are formed because the, the 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 amount of charge that is happening today actively is much higher so we we do have some shaley sequences that they are not not perfect seals as we know uh, but but um um the 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 Secret, I would say, is the is the, is the presence of a, an active hydrocarbon charge. Uh, okay, thank you once more. Uh, I still have some other questions. Uh, the other one is from Eber Bueno. He is also independent from Colombia. 
Uh, is it possible to apply the overpressure domains below the frontal folds to identify anisotropic zones with the aim to know which areas are anisotropic or isotropic and use this in 2D or 3D seismic processing? Uh, yes, I, 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 think, I think in the frontal areas, if you mean the undeformed areas, what we would see is, is, is as we have seen the campus basin, the overburden and the lithologies. Uh, controlling controlling the, the overpressure and also the evolution, and and uh, uh, yet the idea we, we could compare that with the, with the outcome from from seismic data and and to see uh, the idea would be for example we 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 have three seismic volumes in 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 um, uh, in the campus basin for example, and then uh, we can compare this evolutionary view with a 3D uh, uh, view from the seismic uh, prediction of, of, of seal and, and, and rock properties and so on. Uh, and that's ideal and, and it's, 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 it's possible to do that, yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so far we have just one more question from mm -hmm. Fernando Rodriguez from BHP yes. USA. Uh, he says, great talk, Andres, how do you Specify the lithologies bed by bed, shale, uh, shale sand ratio, etc. Have you dated any overpressure markers like veins to constrain the pore pressure models? Uh, let me uh, answer the first one and then afterwards, if you if could, I, I think I couldn't understand the second one. So the first okay. one, it is in the, in the, uh, the, the beds in Andino uh, can be, can be, uh, you can define, I, I mean, I can even show that. Uh, 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 is very easy. Um, so you can define here, this is Andino here, and you can define, modify, and de define ba basically these properties are, are the rock properties, porosity in surface, porosity dec decay coefficient, and density. These are the basic properties for, 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 um, for uh, pressure modeling in Andino. And then what, 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 what you have to do is to, is to uh, to be more, in the, more detailed regarding the lithologies, what we would have to do is to define more uh, layers, more layers, and, and the more layers you define, uh, you would give those properties. Those properties that I was showing are uh, typical of specific lithologies. So there is a catalog, for example, in the, in the Thomas Hanschel book of, of rock properties, uh, where you can see a shale, a limestone, a chalk, and all those different lithologies, and you would provide the lithologies uh, to, to Andino uh, in order to, 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 to uh, give the, the properties. But, but the, more, um, the, the thinner uh, bedding that, that you have and lateral changes and those considerations that can be introduced in Andino, the more accurate would be the, the prediction. One, one thing, Andres, uh, um, also you can, with a track bar, uh, control the rate between shells and sandstone. Oh, okay, okay. that's, that's yeah. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you, Ernesto. You're welcome. Okay, uh, thank you. Continuing the, uh, the question from Fernando, uh, he asks, yes. uh, have you dated any overpressure markers like veins to constrain the pore pressure models? Yes, uh, that, that is that is what we did that in the in the Eastern Cordillera. Not if the veins, the veins we, we see, we have published that in the Journal of Structural Geology, uh, and we have seen uh, in, in the Eastern Cordillera, not in the foothills, that the, the peak of our pressure from veins and and and, and uh, hydraulic fractures is about 20 uh, late Oligocene, early Miocene. But it's a very interesting point because that those overpressure indicators. Are not necessarily coincident with with the overpressure indicators that we see, but my guess is that is because they are from the initial states states of folding. Uh, what we see more is is uh, uh, fault rocks and and those things that are more difficult to date when we see the more brittle late deformation uh, from the Maya Pliocene that we haven't dated those, but but from the initial states of of, of deformation uh, uh, by the uh, uh, Initial states of folding and, and bending of the of the of the beds. We dated the fractures and, and use fluid inclusions and, and all the tools in the Eastern Cordillera. And, and, and it's interesting because it, it provides an approximate age of, of, the, of the, the initial detachment folds. But but in more in more advanced stages where the formation is more complex and rates are faster and and, and the formation is more brittle, uh, that is much more difficult because of the 
of the amount of deformation and crushing and, and so on. Okay. Uh, he also has a, a, another piece of question, but I think that maybe you have answered a bit, but I will read it just uh, in case. Uh, how do you distinguish between overpressure related to high sedimentation rates and fast vertical compaction versus horizontal compaction due to shortening? In, in, in the software? I, th I think most. I, th I think most of the of the of the uh, so far is related with with, with uh, rates of sedimentation. Uh, it is not directly addressing uh, uh, the the contractional related uh, um, um, uh, overpressure. But as I mentioned earlier in an earlier question, both things are are are. Uh, relevant for, for the, the, the actual observation in the foothills is that both are very relevant for, for the pressure for the pressure regimes in the, in the foothills, which are not overpressured. But Andino models more uh, overburden and, and, and pressure release by erosional loading and loading today. Okay, thank you once more. Uh, thank you. We have another question from Daniel Bello. Uh, yes. He asks, what's the most important artificial intelligence or basic geology to define a, ba a basin? Sorry, what was the question again? I think is, what's the most important artificial intelligence or basic geology to define a basin? <laughs> That's a well, very, very, no, I would say basic geology. <laughs> yes, but, but that's a very general question. <laughs> So does anyone has uh, another question still? We still have a bit of time, not much, maybe for once more. Okay. Well, if no one else has a question, uh, me in behalf of the APG, IFP School Student Chapter, I would like to thank you a lot, Andres, for this amazing thank presentation you. and for your time that you spend with us. And thank that you. was an amazing time. And I hope we can strengthen our, our relations for the in the future. No, it was it was my pleasure. I'm very thankful with the, with the opportunity. It is, it's a nice space to show these new new tools that we have been developing. And, and I thank you for, for the invitation. I'm, I'm very happy with, with with the talk and with the with the audience and the questions. Thanks a lot, Douglas. Thank you very much. Uh, just more one information. Uh, if you don't follow us yet, please, uh, I'm writing here our, our main Instagram account and also it's the, the link for our LinkedIn. We are going to publish our, this, this recording, the recording of this section as long as it's ready. And it's, we would like to thank you a lot for, for participating with us and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.